Hey everyone, welcome to the Andy Movie Show. Came at my show, now you're looking for movies. I'm your host, Evelyn Torture Chamber, and this fork knife, we're going to be talking about Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the movie, not the book. I don't know anything about the book or the game. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is a film that released in 2010 and it's about a young lesbian who learns the power of respecting himself. Also, there's some cute girls, there's some cool action like in the video games, and there's a super fucking slapping soundtrack. Also, this movie is one of my faves, so I'm gonna talk about it. Scott Pilgrim is dating a high schooler. Scott Pilgrim is dating a high schooler, an opening line that makes me very uncomfortable. We're introduced to Knives Chow, the demure high schooler, and Scott Pilgrim, the awkward loser, who's also our main character. And he plays bass in this cool band. <laughs> Singer guy and young Neil compliment Scott on his new GF, but everyone else seems understandably negative about the revelation that this 22 year old is dating a child. Yes, yeah, so I'm not gonna like spend a long time on this part, but it is a predatory relationship. Uh, thankfully, they really only ever show it as a negative thing. The relationship kind of shows Scott's growth as a character as he loses interest in high school stuff, but it's also kind of messed up to use the human girl as like a prop for that. He's also like underage. Okay, moving on. So we see some awkward dates with Knives and Scott, and then we're introduced to a very important plot point. These characters are very, very good at video games. Just put a pin, you have to put a pin in that. Put a, if you're, it's a video essay, so you have to put a pin in that. Okay, so then Scott has this dream where he sees this, the, the most super perfect manic pixie dream girl, this total dream girl who also somehow kind of looks like really similar to him, just kind of more feminine and confident. But don't think about that part. Don't, don't focus on that part. From the moment he sees her, Scott is obsessed. He floats through his days, adrift, life devoid of all meaning, until he goes to some cool party or something, and he finds out that the girl of his dreams is actually real. So Ramona Flowers is the girl of Scott's dreams, and, and, and she doesn't really get a whole lot of like actual character development on her own, but she's very, very cool and very confident. And time and time again, we can see Ramona act as an idealized version of Scott. For example, when Ramona doesn't want to talk about her past, she firmly establishes her boundaries. Was he your boyfriend? Do you mind if I don't get into that right now? Oh, it's so not interesting to me. When Scott is in the same situation, he folds just like right away. What happened with the two of you? Do you mind if we don't get into it? Right now, she wanted to move to Montreal because she missed her best friend, this guy Todd. Showing his lack of self-esteem. Another example of this is Scott's hair thing. Scott trims his own hair and he's very, very self-conscious about it to where if anyone even like brings it up, he puts on a hat. Your hair's cute. I like it long. But it'd be cute or short, wouldn't it? What? What? Ramona is also shown to make caring decisions about her hair, but when she's challenged on this, she comes back with a strong sense of self-confidence. You know your hair? I know of it. It's all blue. I change my hair every week and a half to get used to it. Okay, so obviously a big point of the movie is that Ramona is like Scott's dream girl, right? But there's more to it than just wanting to date her. In the beginning of the movie, Scott is not happy. He's, he's looking for like some way to feel satisfied with his own life. Ramona, with her confidence and self-certainty, represents an idealized Scott. In other words, Scott wants to be Ramona. I know, right? It just... I'm... So when we move forward to the first date, we can see that Scott is like kind of obsessed with Ramona. He wants to do anything that he can to stay in the presence of this beautiful woman who makes him feel like his life is worth living for a second. You don't remember me, do you? We met at the party the other day. Were you the Pac-Man guy? No, not even. That was some total ass. 
I was the other guy. Ramona, on the other hand, knows what she wants and is very in touch with her own feelings. She moves things forward with Scott as much as she feels comfortable, and then, as soon as she starts feeling like it might be a little bit uncomfortable, she, she addresses it and she stops right away. I changed my mind. Changed it to what? From what? I don't want to have sex with a pill girl. Not right now. Oh, okay. Well, this is nice. Just this. It's been like a really long time, so I think I needed this. Whatever it is, so thank you. The, the, like, here's Scott at this point in his life where everything is, is just empty and meaningless, and then here comes this amazing girl who just makes him feel like life is worth living. And, like, this scene makes me really emotional because it's so, like, bittersweet. Because, like, Scott is getting that feeling externally, right? He needs the other person in order to feel okay with himself. And he doesn't realize that he can get that feeling just 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 by himself without the other person. The beautiful girl is already inside of him. Okay, so moving on to the first fight scene, we find out about the whole thing where Scott needs to defeat Ramona's seven evil exes if he's gonna, like, date her or whatever. The fights all give us information about Ramona's backstory, and also, they're all kind of fucking rad as hell. Wait! We're fighting over Ramona? Didn't you get my email explaining the situation? I skimmed it. Mm-mm. You will pay for your insolence! We can also kind of see the fights as steps on Scott's journey to self-love. In this first fight with Matthew Patel, Scott is given a rude awakening that he has been just like drifting aimlessly through his life. Since Scott was so detached from his own life, he was unable to see the danger that was present. Dear Mr. Pilgrim, it has come to my attention that we will be fighting soon. My name is Matthew Patel and blah, 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 blah. This is... This is... This is... What? This is boring. Delete. So after the fight, Scott is still grateful for Ramona's presence, but he's also starting to have some resentment just over the fact that Ramona's existence brings danger. And over the next, like, hour or whatever of the movie, we can see Scott's resentment grow every time he has to fight for Ramona. Pure water. And it tastes so fuck all. Now, like I said earlier, the fights are really super cool and fun to watch, but, um, there is kind of a sense that, like, they happen instead of showing like character development for Scott. Um, cause really what happens is he keeps fighting in the fights and just, you know, every time he gets more exhausted and worn down and, you know, resenting the fact that he has to fight in the first place. After fight number two, Ramona disappears and Scott is left looking for her. Sorry, that got a little crazy last night. Yeah, you kind of disappeared. After fight number three, Scott is hurt and he's defensive with Ramona. And after fight number four, he gets drunk and passive-aggressively berates her for putting him in the situation. Hey, just out of sheer curiosity and concern for my mortal well-being, is there anyone at this party that you haven't slept with? <laughs> I feel like we just washed our sexy laundry in public. Dirty laundry, you're drunk. I had like one drink. The next fight with the Katyanagi twins is actually the first time where Scott chooses to show up for the battle rather than just being surprised. Also, there's this sweet energy frost gorilla and I love it a lot. But at this point, it's too late and Ramona leaves Scott to go be with uh, 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 Gideon. Gideon. His name's Gideon, the, 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 the evil guy. So, Scott has shown us that he's very, very strong and very good at video game, but it's his attitude that pushes Ramona away. And then, after she does actually leave him, he's just heartbroken and he misses her. This brings us to the final act where Scott fights his final battle, and then he just straight up gets killed. <laughs> Thank you. 
So Scott dies. He goes to like Toronto Afterlife or whatever. And then he remembers that he got a life. He got like a one up earlier. So he respawns and tries over. He starts over the level. Now I want to focus on one main difference between these two fights. In the first one, Scott says this. You want to fight me for her? Now why on earth would you want to do that? Because I'm in love with her. Scott earned the power of love. When Scott earns the power of love, he's really pushing down his own self in order to focus on another person, a person outside of himself. This comes to a head when he's confronted about his cheating, since he dated Knives and Ramona at the same time. And Scott, like, kind of struggles to justify this to Ramona, which ends up being enough of a distraction to get him killed. You cheated on me with Knives? No, I... cheated on Knives with you. Is there a difference? You weren't wronged. Right? <laughs> So, the text shows us that Scott's power of love is kind of immediately used to, to lie, basically, to, like, distort reality, to seem cooler to the object of his love. And we can see how this extremely focused love is harmful to Scott, because he gets fucking stabbed about it. But it's also a clear contrast to the second Gideon fight where Scott wins. You want to fight me? For her? No. I want to fight you for me. Scott earned the power of self-respect. And we can see Scott use his power of self-respect in this new alternate timeline when he's confronted about his cheating. No knives, I hurt you. I cheated on you. I cheated on both of you. I'm really sorry. This time, he just honestly explains what happened. Due to his newfound self-respect, he realizes that the only way he could move forward and still respect himself is by telling the truth. It's also the first time he really admits his own flaws, which is a really big development for this character. Like the character develop, like it's like the thing, character development. But okay, so like, even though Scott didn't win using the power of love, Scott still loves Ramona, right? I mean, like, at the end of the movie, they kind of walk off into the door together after they decide to try again. Uh, maybe we could try again. But they do leave it pretty ambiguous. In this timeline, Scott never even said that he loved her. And in the end, they just, you know, they're just walking away and they decide to go together. What we do know is that now, for the first time, Scott is acting with love towards himself. So, when Scott decides to go with Ramona, we can see that they're literally together, like they're walking together, but they're also figuratively moving together. Scott is deciding to, to leave behind this version of himself where he's just wandering around aimlessly through his life into a version of himself where he knows what he wants and he like tries to go do those things. Scott is finally trying to be the idealized version of himself. Scott is Ramona. And I know you have reasons for not wanting to talk about your past, and I want you to know I don't care about any of that stuff because I'm in lesbians with you. What? I really, really mean it. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my video. Uh, make sure that you like it if you liked it and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to be subscribed to my channel. Also, if you have anything else that you want me to talk about, if you have any suggestions, uh, I would love to hear from you in a comment or a tweet or anything like that. Uh, and if you're done with all of that, you should go listen to my music or buy it on, on, on Bandcamp or whatever, or just download it. It's really good to have downloaded copies of stuff. You should really, you should really download the stuff you like. If you like my music, please download it for free. Like, it's just good to have files, you know what I mean? Anyway, thanks a whole lot for listening. I love you. Bye. I'm gonna shit myself. 
I'm gonna shit myself. I'm gonna shit myself. I'm gonna shit myself. Woo hoo hoo.